expertise from the United States Coast Guard, the United States Navy, Canadian Armed Forces and Coast Guard, and the Titan's parent company, Ocean Gate Expedition. This is a complex search effort which requires multiple agencies with subject matter expertise and specialized equipment. While the U.S. Coast Guard has assumed the role of search and rescue mission coordinator, we do not have all of the necessary expertise and equipment retired, required in a search of this nature. The Unified Command brings that expertise and additional capability together to maximize effort in solving this very complex problem. As a recap, on Sunday, the, uh, the Coordination uh, Command Center in Boston received a report from the Canadian Expedition vessel, a Polar Prince, of an overdue 21-foot submarine Titan with five people on board. The Titan was attempting to dive on the wreck of the Titanic approximately 900 miles east of Cape Cod and 400 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland. Approximately one hour and 45 minutes into the scheduled dive, the Polar Prince lost all communication with the Titan. The Polar Prince conducted an initial search and then requested Coast Guard assistance. The U.S. Coast Guard in Boston assumed the responsibility of search and rescue mission coordinator and immediately launched search assets. Since Sunday, the Coast Guard has coordinated search efforts with the U.S. and Canadian Coast Guard, Air National Guard aircraft, and the Polar Prince, which has searched a combined 7,600 square miles, an area larger than the state of Connecticut. These search efforts have focused on both surface, with C-130 aircraft searching by sight and with radar, and subsurface with P-3 aircraft were able to drop and monitor sonar buoys. To date, those search efforts have not yielded any results. Search efforts have continued through last night and today. Today, the vessel Deep Energy, 194 meter pipe laying vessel arrived on scene with underwater ROV capability. They have rendezvoused with the vessel Polar Prince and commenced an ROV dive at the last known of the position of the Titan and the approximate position of the Titanic wreck. That operation is currently ongoing. Additionally, a Canadian P-3 aircraft is currently conducting a six-hour search of the area and several C-130 aircraft and another P-3 are scheduled to fly this afternoon and this evening. The Canadian Coast Guard cutter or vessel, John Cabot, is scheduled to arrive later this evening, and several other Canadian Coast Guard vessels and the Coast Guard cutter Sycamore are en route. Additionally, the U.S. Coast Guard has um, the U.S. Navy's Subsal Supervisor Salvaging Diving Command is working with U.S. Transportation Command to bring additional assets to the search area. These more cap capable assets will be staged at a St. John's for further transport to the search area. There are also several private vessels, research vessels with ROV capabilities that are making preparations to join the efforts. So I want to reiterate, uh, this is a very complex search and the unified team is working around the clock to bring all available assets and expertise to bear as quickly as possible in an effort to solve this very complex problem. We'll, co we'll continue to provide updates as they become available. And again, our thoughts and prayers are with the crew and the families and their loved ones. We will provide unwavering effort as we continue the search, and I think at this time we'll open it up and take a few questions. So, so each of the ROVs, uh, so, so that's kind of a vague question, right? That, uh, ROVs have different capability. It's our understanding the current ROV that is deployed uh, at the site now has some limited capability. Uh, it has a camera on board. Um, but, but again, each of those is different, and uh, we'll be gathering more information as that uh, operation uh, goes on through the day. Captain, Captain it's Tom Costello with NBC office. News. Uh, if your submersibles can find this sub, is there any way to retrieve it and save the people on board? Yeah, so right now, all of our efforts are focused on finding the sub. Um, what I will tell you is we have a group of, of uh, our nation's best experts in the unified command, and if we get to that point, uh, those experts will be looking at what the next course of action is. Captain, how many hours of oxygen are left that you know of or that you can estimate right now so, on the submersible? And is it a, has, does it have to be approved or regulated? Sure. So, so first of all, it's, it's an estimate, right? Because we know uh, from the uh, 
the, the data we were using uh, as a starting point was 96 hours. We know at this point we're approximately uh, about 40, 41 hours. 41 hours left? Yes. And does it have, they have to be approved or regulated? Does it go through anything that you know of? Yeah, I'm not sure uh, of, of the exact technical uh, piece of that. We know there's about uh, there's about 40 hours of, of breathable air uh, left based on that initial report. Again, uh, that was just the initial report based on 96 hours uh, from when the vessel. Um, Captain, 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 Captain. Captain. Even, even, even with that amount of time that's left, let's say 41 hours or so, if you were to find the submersible at this moment, would that give you enough time to save these five people on board? Yeah. I, so, so I, I don't know the answer to that question. What I will tell you is we will do everything in our power to uh, to effect a rescue. Um, again, uh, it's going to depend on uh, if, if the ROV finds something, it's going to depend on what they find, what what needs to be, uh, what steps need to be taken next. And uh, and really that is for the experts within the unified command um, to take a look at and then, and then uh, decide what the best course of action is. Captain, 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 News. It seems to have taken another successor running this operation, about eight hours contact you on Sunday after they lost contact with the sun. Is that a cause of concern? Listen, right now, uh, our effort and our focus is on searching with what we know. Uh, when, As soon as we received the report on Sunday evening, we immediately uh, launched search efforts. Uh, we flew assets that evening, and we've continued constant uh, surface and air asset searches uh, since that point. You mentioned that the search operation is right in the Where are the biggest challenges that you have to deal with today? Well, it, it's a, this is a complex search, and um, it's complex for a variety of reasons. Um, we're, we're, you know, you're talking about a search area that's 900 miles east of Cape Cod, uh, 400 miles um, south of uh, St. John's. So logistically speaking, it's hard to bring assets to bear. It takes time. It takes coordination. Um, and then we're dealing with, uh, you know, two pieces of, you're dealing with a surface search and a subsurface search. And frankly, that makes it an incredibly complex operation. Captain, Captain will the Navy, will the U.S. Navy or the Canadian Navy be able to get salvage equipment on time before the air runs out? Obviously, uh, getting salvage equipment on scene is a top priority. Uh, Unified Command is working through that to prioritize uh, what equipment um, we can get there. There are ongoing operations right now uh, via the U.S. Navy and Transcom to get to get equipment uh, staged in St. John's and to get it on scene. I can't give you an exact timeline of when that's going to happen. But what I can tell you is uh, there is a full press, full court press effort uh, to get equipment on scene as quickly as we can. Is that equipment, is that equipment already on the East Coast, though, or is it coming from the Pacific, for example? No. The, so some of the equipment that's coming is coming from the East Coast, but again, we're talking about very heavy equipment. Um, it, it's a complicated transport operation, but the best uh, professionals in the world are working it, and that's uh, U.S. Transcom. Okay. Yeah, when, when it comes to the, uh, the equipment, can you put in more detail? Do you have a current 21 that's, uh, that's being shipped up to that location? And since you don't have the fleet type vessel, could be the Apache to the mission? What other assets you have? Yeah, so like I said, there are some, there are several civilian ships uh, that have offered services heading that way. There are additional Coast Guard cutters. Uh, we hope to have a Canadian Coast Guard cutter on scene this evening. We hope that they may be able to assume on scene commander. Uh, Polar Prince has been doing a, a great job with those duties, uh, but if we could take some of that uh, from them, uh, that would be good. But your, your question about specific equipment, I, I'm not going to get into talking about specific equipment. Frankly, I'm not an expert on what that equipment is, but again, I can tell you we have experts in the Unified Command that are going through that, prioritizing what we need and then how we get it on scene. Can you tell us about the personnel from Boston, uh, how many people from here are out there and also where equipment? From Boston specifically, yeah, from Boston. so the so Boston, where, where Boston plays a role is the the command center, the rescue and coordination center is here in Boston. Um, the the aircraft that are coming in are coming from different locations, um, but uh, but the command uh, structure is, is being worked out of uh, out of Boston. And I think we have time for for, for two more questions. In, in all your experience, just how unique is it? The Coast Guard ever has a Well, I. Yeah, I don't want to speak about it. The Coast Guard is ever. I would tell you it's a unique operation. It's a challenging operation. Um, but uh, but right now we're focused on on uh, putting everything we can at it and uh, and, and searching um, as hard as we can and getting the assets out there um, as quickly as we can. And so, inside the company, the other assets that are rushing to the carrier, what sort of assets do they have? Do they have LEDs? Do they have solar technology? Do they have OPDs? Yeah, there, so there, there are some additional assets with, with ROVs. Um, 
There is uh, one asset they made that is working to get on scene with a decompression chamber. Um, so those are all pieces that are coming together, and, uh, and we're working those logistical challenges to get them uh, get them there. And I think we'll take uh, one more. Well, I, I can't tell you exactly what it would look like. I would tell you that, uh, you know, we are out there, we're searching. We, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be searching and putting all effort out there. Um, I think that, you know, if the sub is located, that's a question that then, then the, uh, the experts need to look at what is the best course of action uh, for recovering the sub. But I think it's going to depend on that particular situation and, uh, and if we encounter that. Sir, is it true that the British offered assistance and they were told we don't need your assistance at this point? No, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Again, what I would tell you, though, is that the Unified Command is working through, uh, working through prioritizing. We, and we know that there's equipment out there um, that can be brought uh, to the scene. Um, the Unified Command is working through prioritizing what equipment we need and then how we get it there. And the so, French are also responding to the ship as well? Yes, that's my understanding. Correct. And uh, I think we're going to wrap it there. Okay. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys coming out today. Glue this portion of the brief on there. Um, I can stay behind just to take some uh, additional stuff that maybe wasn't answered. We can try to get some information back to you um, kind of a little later. Right. So the, uh, the rescue coordination center that he's talking about specifically, that's based in Boston. So the personnel that are working in the command and control environment, as far as. Uh, uh, building a lot of the search and rescue plans, sending out the information, coordinating those pieces are here. The uh, the people affecting the mission, so the pilots, the air crews, uh, all of the ships, those are based out of different areas. So our pilots, air crews are out of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. The Coast Guard Cutter Sycamore, I believe, is out of uh, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, but they were operating already in the Arctic. So it, there are a number of people that are here working in that staff element, but are not physically located out in the search area, oh, if that makes sense. Control, right? It is, yes. It sounds, sounds like the... they have another submersible that they could try to send down there? I don't know. It sounds like, it, for the most part, the staging area is moving to St. John's. So, yeah, I believe, yeah, a lot of it into to St. John, uh, Newfoundland, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what, so our uh, aircraft, the C-130 aircraft, are they're based out of there as well. So I know there is a number of... of uh, pieces going out there logistically it's easier so as opposed about, to from here. Talk about Transcom uh, organizing the different assets available. I asked Transcom to get to the okay. So can you give a little bit more clarity on what kind of assets you have put in the water? I specifically asked about the Code 41. Yeah. Uh, is there one on the way? I don't know. I don't know an answer that. Um, so I know a lot of those questions weren't were unanswered on there and, and it's a lot of it's because we're not the right agency to be asking that. I know as in the command, we should be uh, to be the one to give the answer to you, but we want you guys to hear it from the subject matter experts. Uh, so that's our next plan is what we want to do is give an opportunity for you all to have to get all of the subject matter experts we can into one location to kind of get those questions answered um, to give you kind of the best thing we can do. Yeah, I, I, you yeah. anticipated that in those 40 hours when that becomes a recovery mission, if you choose to do a recovery mission, is that I'm sorry. Plan? When, when those 40 hours yeah, are up, that yeah. gave for the estimate. Is that the moment you shift from a search and rescue to a recovery operation, if you choose to do a recovery operation, given the difficulties? I, I think it really depends on a number of factors. So anything that could change between now and then as far as uh, information response, you know, things like that, that could change that. So it's not a hard and fast, um, you know, timer's up, time to transition. There's a lot of factors that go into it um, that could extend. Uh, something what, like that. Excuse me, what role does the oxygen, amount of oxygen play in one of those factors? And with 40 hours of oxygen left, when would you then transition from a search and rescue to a search and recovery? I don't know. I don't know an answer to that. That's that's definitely outside. But we can try to get back to as we transition about, through that phase. We'll have better answers for that. Is there information about the conditions out there? Like what exactly are our so the weather wise, yep. So actually I have, um, I believe the weather on scene today uh, was uh, five to six foot seas. Um, what does that mean, so sorry, not the wave? So wave height, five to six feet. Um, I believe it was 15 knot winds. Um, visibility was, was very foggy yesterday with very little nose visibility, uh, but was, was um, increasing today and they were expecting better, much better conditions uh, from an aerial search perspective. So it's so very foggy today. Yes. 
successful? I was 15 knot wins. So uh, in it's terms, it's enough. it's um, it, it's not it, it's, not it's about bad. average out there, oh, right? Okay. How long would it take a typical Coast Guard vessel from the U.S., or for that matter from Newfoundland, to get on site if they're running at maximum speed? That depends on the cutter itself or the ship itself because they all have different speeds. Yeah. Um, but do you have an average just so we have a feel for how long it would take to get there? Well, depending on where they're coming from, uh, it could be a matter of, you know, two days up to four to five days. It just depends on where they would be deploying from. Two so, days from Newfoundland, for example? Mm, I don't know. We don't have any ships up there, so I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. The Canadian, we're, we're trying to find out more information on the Canadian vessels that are assisting on there, sort of what their capability and speeds are. I just don't have an answer for you on that right now. Does the Coast Guard have a line on a piece of equipment that is capable of going down to the Titanic? The Coast Guard specifically, no. Um, this this type of the salvage operation and our expertise as an organization is no. In terms of yeah. private companies, have you reached? So the that's all part of the conversation between flight command to to find out what capabilities are out there and explore all avenues that they You're can. You're looking at that now. The Coast Guard is usually pretty quick about releasing videos and photos and things like that from their operations. Is there a specific reason why you haven't from this operation? We just haven't received any yet at this point. And you don't expect to? Do we do. We do expect to get some. Um, like I said, we do have uh, some graphics that we're trying to look to send out this afternoon. Um, as well as we've, we've reached out to the aircraft crews to get uh, footage from them. Now I know with the the ROVs that are on scene today, uh, like I said, there just hasn't been any before. So we are, are, are requesting out there to try and see what we can get to go through that and try to make that available to you all. I don't have an I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. The Coast Guard assets itself, no, we do, we do not have any Coast Guard cutters on scene. No, so the research vessels, I just don't know what the capabilities are. Do you think it's looking pretty unrealistic that it has made its way to the surface and its way to be spotted? Because you've done all of these aerial searches, and you're quite confident it's in the water. That's why we have both types of assets, because we don't want to exhaust one uh, possibility in vice of another. So we don't want to rule out that it is um, on the surface. And the way that our crews train, this is the environment they train in. They're, they're specialized in being able to see these things from the air. So they've, they've given everything that they have to it. And if it's on the surface, we're, we're fairly certain that we would be able to find it. You would it find out? No, that we, that we will find it if it is on the surface. But you think it's more likely it's on the surface? It's impossible to say. Can I just ask you to... I realize this may be challenging, you may not have the answer, yeah. but we're trying to get a sense of how far away the nearest naval asset would be that has that lift capability, salvage capability. Is it coming from North Carolina, from Florida, from Boston? Any Can you give us any idea of how far away it might be? Yeah, I, don't have, I don't have an answer yeah. to that. Yeah. Do you know if anybody, um, do you know if that vessel has a finger or some other way of communicating? For the research vessel? The Titan. Yeah. Oh, communicating with them? Yeah, yeah. I don't have specifics on technology on board. Do you understand they've lost contact in the past on other expeditions? Has the Coast Guard ever been involved with them? Not, not to they, my knowledge. And, but Ocean Beat is cooperating with the investigation. Absolutely. They're, so, yeah, they're, they're part of the unified command in here, so we're all making decisions together. So do they, do they have anything else that could go down? 13,000 I don't know, um, but... If they do, it's definitely being discussed as far as their capabilities. Would they tell you if they did? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sound that helpful. I don't understand. Like, it sounds like the nearest vessel, that it's not clear how long it would take to get a vessel there. Right. And that, that's just the biggest part of the challenge of all of this, is trying to understand how the capabilities are working together, how they would do it, the technical aspect of that. So if you're a family member or something, I think it was it was clearly stay with with Captain Frederick. Can you could we ask you could you just describe if, you know the the crush depth here? We're we're talking about 400 times, as I understand it, what we all experience at sea level. What can that do to a, a vessel? I can't I can't speak to the scientific side of that. Um, again, this is just more or less trying to get some background information for you guys on there. I don't have 
any of that information on that. Can you tell us about what the circumstances were? I mean, submersible doesn't necessarily, it goes in for a dive and walks right back yep. up. It doesn't, it's not supposed to be there for that long. Is there? And that would be a, a great question that we could try to get answered for you with that subject matter expert um, discussion that we, we talked about for the to get the opportunity for you guys to ask that question because it'd be much more important and, and realistic for somebody within that community uh, part of the command that would be able to answer that question a lot clearer than anything I could I would be able to. So and no, when, when might you provide your next update? Uh, so we do have a press uh, release that's going to be going out shortly with the graphics we talked about. Um, probably similar information to what was passed today. Um, if any 